Hello everyone. This is a Compact Presario 4660. It's from 1998 and uh, there is little information about it online besides its basic spec sheet. Uh, and so, and so uh, I wanted to tear it down to just clean it and replace the PRAM battery, see what my upgrade options would be, see like what hard drive it had. Yeah, uh, because uh, I had uh, taken off the cover once before and seeing how proprietary it was on the inside. Let me just show you the back. As you can see, the power supply is just smack in the middle for some reason. Uh, all the ports are there. Serials over here for some reason. And uh, it's really small. There are a couple, a few full-size cases for comparison. So, uh, today I'll be showing you how to completely tear this down. Since I couldn't find a tutorial like this on the internet, I had to do it myself. So, I did it myself, so you don't have to. Let's start with what you'll need to do it. Okay, so, step one, you need a toolkit. No, you do not need every single one of these screwdrivers. The only things you are going to need are, uh, that is T8, I believe. Does that say T8? No, T9. You need T9 Torx and T15. As well as a Phillips head. Uh, I'm using Phillips head size 2. So that's what I'm using here. And that's it. Uh, so this is going to be a full tear down all the way down to the board. So, step one, grab your T15 Torx and unscrew case screw there, case screw there, and another case screw up there. Also, ignore this band-aid on my hand. I somehow cracked it or uh, just cut my hand and work when putting this back together last time I took it apart So I had to put a band-aid on that seems to always happen to me when I'm taking apart desktops I'm gonna get the top screw now Okay, now you need to slide off the case for me. This is the hardest part But mine seems to come off really easy now. Maybe because I didn't put it on quite correctly last time, so you might need to work at this. It took me probably 20 minutes to do it the first time. It's really annoying. And I broke multiple pieces of brittle plastic trying. So, don't like this design very much. And then this slides off, and so let's take a look inside the case. So, this side you can see into the board, but there's not much. This side, you can see the inside of the computer. Again, the power supply is just in the middle. You can see the cables in there. You can kind of see the RAM back there. Under it, you can see the expansion card slots. And for me, this is just the modem card it came with. I'm assuming it came with the modem card. Also, if there are any parts in this video, I'm very, <laughs> okay, so I'm very bad at putting screws back. When I'm putting something back together, I always forget a couple or put some in the wrong place. So if there's ever a step in this tutorial where you're like, something's not coming off, and you said it would come off, just like this, check to make sure there's not a screw that I've just forgotten about. So make sure of that. Now we get to this computer's special piece up here, the hard drive. It's all the way on the top, and it is a five and a quarter inch drive. I was really shocked when I saw this. This is a Quantum Bigfoot TX, eight gigs IDE hard drive. So this is really cool, and kind of hilarious that they put the biggest hard drive in like a teeny desktop. Hang on one second, I'll go get a standard three and a half inch drive. Okay, so here's a three and a half inch drive in comparison. Here's a two and a half inch drive, and here's a IBM micro drive, so you can see the sizes right there. Pretty cool. 
And I've checked, it is healthy. Okay, so let's turn our attention to the inside of the case. So the first thing we're gonna really need to do here is deal with the power supply. So we're gonna remove this first. So step one, go around back and remove these four screws. These two are smaller than these two. So make sure to take a note of that. They're Phillips. If you find the two smaller screws in a different place, again, that's the kind of thing I feel like I'd screw up when putting it back together. So make sure that you take note of that. Okay. And then we have to actually remove it. So I'm gonna turn for this, I'm gonna turn the desktop on its side. Okay, that was loud. And I'm gonna place the tripod somewhere else so you can see into what I'm doing here. I'm just using the top, the case that we removed. So uh, the first thing I found to do here that would be easiest is to remove the modem card. Uh, you need to unscrew the screw, but I forgot to put it back in. I must have put that screw in a different place, so it's just gonna pull out for me, so I'm gonna do that. Just wiggle it back and forth. It's an ISA 16-bit card, so not a PCI card, pretty old. This was also, all of this was extremely dusty. Uh, I went in and cleaned it out as best as I could quickly. So, there's that. Then, these are the main power connectors. I'm gonna make sure that it's all discharged. So, just reach in and pull these out. <clears throat> they shouldn't give you any trouble, there's nothing you need to unlatch. All right, once you've done that, you can slide the power supply out a bit and then pull it out. However, you're not yet done because you need to disconnect all the drives from the power supply. So, disconnect the floppy, pulls right out. Disconnect the CD-ROM. Pulls right out, and then disconnect the hard drive from up top. It's really putting up a fuss. This is not the best angle to do this, and there's not a whole lot of clearance to pull. I'm gonna have to get a better angle of this. So, this is not easy to film, so. Bear with me here. Got it. Okay. I need to come back around now. All right, I'm sitting here now, and that should be everything unplugged. So just pull it out, and now the power supply's out. Okay, next, uh, you can't, if you're just trying to get to the hard drive, if your hard drive's died, or if you're wanting to replace like a floppy or a CD-ROM, uh, well, the floppy's actually easy to do, so we're going to do that next. But to get to pretty much anything else, there's another set of, you can unscrew these screws, but there's another set of screws on the other side, and the only way to get to that is to remove the board, but luckily that's pretty easy, so it shouldn't cause you much trouble. Okay, so... Now to move the floppy drive, we just have to unscrew this one screw right here, it's Torx. And then it should slide right out, probably with a bit more trouble than it did for me since again this is my second time doing this. Then you just pull and unplug the connector and the floppy drive module's out. It has room for a second bay even though there's no way to put like a second drive in there and have it fit, which is a bit strange. Alright, so uh, now that that's out, the next step, if you want to go further, is just to remove the motherboard, uh, which isn't as hard as it sounds. So, oh wait, first step, we need to prepare 
the board for removal by disconnecting all connectors to other components. So that means things like unplugging the ribbon cables for the CD drive, or in this case, a DVD-ROM, and the hard drive. All right, that's gone. You don't need to disconnect them from the board yet. Uh, then you need to disconnect the two, the this cable that also goes to the CD-ROM. Probably maybe for the LED light. And that just disconnects from right down there. Then you need to disconnect this cable going to the serial port. It just unplugs like that. Remember where all these go. It isn't hard. Uh, and then the final step is to disconnect this fan in here. I'll show you where that is. Connects right down there. This just pulls off. You can remember where it goes back in because uh, there's a missing pin on the board and a blocked off pin on the connector. And that's all you need to disconnect from the motherboard. All right, now to go on and actually remove the board. I'm gonna flip this thing over. Next, we need to do this. So here it is, here's our board. So uh, again, this is one of those cases where I don't know if there are screws here or not. Uh, but check these two spots as well as a spot down here. I have screws in here, but I could have put them back where there weren't any originally. I'm, again, I'm very bad at that. So just check those three spots for screws. And then if there are screws in those spots, remove them. Apologies for the wobble. Okay, once they're gone, get this. Slide it out, and then pull it out. And then it comes out. Again, yours will probably, you'll probably have a bit more trouble than I did, because again, this is my second time doing it. And then there's this other cable going to the buttons and lights at the front of the case. You just need to pull it out from there. And then just pull the board out. Here's the board. There's the Pentium 2 CPU card, two 16-bit ISA and two PCI. There's your connector for the power supply. There's all your ports. There's your RAM. That I believe is uh, some kind of ROM chip. I don't know if it's the BIOS or not because there appears to be what, what is a BIOS chip somewhere else. Although now that I'm looking again, I'm having trouble finding it. Uh, so I'm not sure where that went. Right there. There it is. BIOS chip. Uh, so that's that. Uh, so if you want to replace the clock battery, you can do it there. CR2032. I've already done it. And if you want to remove the board from the case, just unscrew this screw, this screw, right there, this screw, this screw, this screw, and another one right there. And then it just comes right off. So that's simple enough. That's as far as I'm going to be going with the board, though. Now for other things like the hard drive. Okay, so for the hard drive, you need to remove two screws that are here and here. You need a smaller Torx bit for this, not like the one I'm using. It's the TR9, or T9, from the beginning. This is why we needed to get the board off. Then there are two more on the other side, here and here. Once those are out, you can just lift the hard drive out of the computer. And here it is, the Quantum Bigfoot. Crazy hard drive. Then, uh, this is another one of those cases where you may have screws in different places. I only had two originally. I can't remember if they were here and here, how I have them, or here and here. Only thing is, I couldn't fit the screw in here due to how it was positioned. So, I just put it in the top and bottom. Yours may be different, so just check those four areas. Once 
once again after that. There's, there's just one single other screw, it appears. Again, check all these four areas, but there appears to just be this one other screw here. This is actually my first time removing the CD-ROM, so I didn't do that last time. And that screw just went under my cabinet. That's gone. Okay. So, can this just be slid out like this? No. Okay, so we're going to need to remove this front cover, which I did do before. So basically for this, I'll show you, uh, clip, 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 and then another clip back here, and then another clip back there. So you need to unlatch all those clips in order to remove it. So I'm just going to do that. Be careful, this is 20 plus year old brittle plastic, so it could break. And you don't want that. And that's the front cover off. It is delightfully dusty. I'm going to clean that before putting this back together. And now the CD drive just slides right out. And there it is. Again, this is a DVD-ROM. I believe all these had DVD-ROMs. This is a very early DVD drive, so that's pretty cool. Uh... I'm not going to remove this cable right here because I might forget where it goes. I'm just going to leave that there. And now you have gutted the entire case. Any other parts left, like this front button assembly, look like they're pretty easy to remove. So that should all be quite easy. Anyways, that's going to be it. Here's just a quick look at everything we removed. Power supply, hard drive, DVD drive, front case, my toolkit, the toothbrush that I use to clean things, the uh, remains of the case, the motherboard, the floppy drive, and my hard drives I use for demonstration, and the modem card. So that's it. You have now successfully removed just about everything from this case. And again, there are a couple little things left, like this fan that is just held in by standard Phillips head screws, or this, which the serial port, which looks like it's only held in by the, uh, what are those called? The nuts right there, I guess? Or the front button assembly that also looks really easy to remove, but uh, I'm not going to completely remove all that, and then you're just left with the case. Overall, despite being a very proprietary, teeny little desktop, it's surprisingly easy to disassemble. So easy, in fact, that even I can do it. Uh, I am usually terrible at taking apart desktops, so I'll always end up finding a screw I can't get to, or just something that, about it that just stumps me. But here, no, I was able to actually pull through and do it. So now I can do some final dusting with my toothbrush of this disgusting fan that I should honestly probably remove and clean. And uh, that's it. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you too have one of these obscure, weird computers that seem to be pretty common but also not very widely known, uh, then I hope this helped you. And uh, that's going to be it. Have a good day.